Flip them around, mix it up, but the Gators still in the lead as we get set to start the second half of play. Things looking pretty good for the orange and blue. Tar Heels back quickly. Gators just slammed it upfield off the opening kick. As you can see, it does not happen often. Was it close to 30,000 minutes over their last 13 years, and they haven't even trailed for 500? This is a team that's, that's used to leading. It's amazing, huh? Here's Parlo back in to start the game. She played the entire second half and much of overtime against Portland when she was only expected to play about 20 to 30 minutes. Does she have the legs here tonight? On her left. Tripped up. And a late call as Yohi whistled for the foul. Nice cut. Roberts looking for help. Fair. Headed away by Wambach. These first 10 minutes, Phil, are going to be very important to either team because both teams now are trying to stamp their style of game on it right now. And this is the first 10 minutes that they're going to try and do that. Nice run by Florence. Well read again. Aaron Gilhart, the sophomore, quietly having a monster game in the back for the Gators. Throw in. Schwoy fighting her way through. Keisha Bell. Into the middle for Fotopoulos, the goal scorer for the Gators, and white jerseys in her wake. Somehow gets the ball to the outside, but just behind Wambach, and here come the heels. Boardman finding Schwoy. Carvelson starting the second half of play for Florida. And what we're going to need to see out of Florida this half is we're going to need to see them hold the ball up top. They need to have their forwards winning possession for them and holding the ball, allowing their midfielders and the rest of their defense to get through. Because right now you're going to see that as they have to run and run with only two front, you're going to see some tired legs and they need to hold the ball up top, give their defense a rest and start counterattacking out of the possession up top. Poor clearance by Flaherty. Carolina with another chance to push forward. Jenna Klugel, who started the game, starts the second half on the bench as Carvelson is up front and McDonald in the back. The shot from long range by McDowell is over the bar. So Boardman, Stacker, and Fair in the back for North Carolina. Roberts, Schwoy, McDowell, McDonald in the midfield, and up front, Florence joined by Cindy Parlow and Carvelson. In goal, Siri Mullenix, the Greensboro native. Last year, voted the defensive MVP of the championship tournament. Roberts tripped up, and a foul is called against Florida. Mullenix making a couple of good saves after giving up the goal to keep Carolina within one. But there's little doubt who the goalkeeper of the tournament has been so far, and that's Meredith Flaherty for Florida. Roberts, back post, looking for Parlow. Hall whiffs on the header. The deflected shot wide. And they'll go out for a corner kick. What I really like about Meredith Flaherty is she brings a crazy mentality to the team. She's quite a personality, and she comes with, in with a lot of confidence. She wants to win, and there's no question about it. When she's on the field, she's going to make sure that team is winning. But she's changed. You said when she was a national team camp, she was one of the quietest players. <laughs> that happens a lot <laughs> to people when they come in. Corner kick towards the spot, headed by Florence over the bar. Flaherty. In goal, the one change that the Gators made from their semifinal appearance was putting senior Tracy Ward in the back and starting Kerry Duran in the midfield. They do tend to push up Sarah Yohi, who scored the semifinal goal, into the attack with Wambach and Fotopoulos. But right now, Yohi lined up in the midfield with Hall and Baxter. 
Bell, Gilhart, Ward, and Mitz, the back four for Florida. 1-0, the goal in the sixth minute from Fotopoulos, and Carolina has had their chances and again continue to swarm around the Gators' net. Cleared away by Hall near side. Florence on the turn. Florence into the box to the middle and cleared away. Ward is down. The shot straight up the middle from Schwoy. Flaherty will hold on, but again, the Gators defense taking a blow here. Becky Burley, the first female coach to actually guide a team to the women's championship game. But right now, more important things on her mind. And that's the health of senior defender Tracy Ward. Here we're going to just see a battle of legs. And that what, that's what the second half is going to come down to right there. Who can outscrap the opponent? And it's going to be something that happens a lot, unfortunately, but it's going to be a battle out there in the second half. Looked like she just had cleats raked across her foot. Be interesting to see if she'll be able to go. Clock stopped with 39-20 left to go here in regulation. Gators still leading at 1-0. And they will guide Ward off the field to the bench. And she is favoring that left foot. The J.C. Penny Classic coming your way on ABC Sports later today at 4 p.m. Eastern. What a show that should be. It looks like Ward will go out. And coming into the game, Renee Reynolds, the Pembroke Pines, Florida sophomore. Reynolds, a member of the under-20 national team. And what a pressure situation for the young sophomore trying to hold on to a 1-0 lead against North Carolina. Back to Flaherty, and she'll boot this one into the attack. And not much attack from Florida so far in the second half. Patopoulos trying to spin the header on, and it's quickly sent back into the Florida area. Cleared away by Bell. Into the middle for Hall and freeing Fotopoulos and just a little unlucky. If she was an inch shorter, she could have been on the break. Reynolds pushing it back and Mullenix no problem. Phil Shane, Julie Foudy with you here in Greensboro and joined by very familiar face in the women's soccer world, U.S. national team coach Tony DeChico. I guess keeping an eye on you, Julie. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> he always yeah, seems to pop to up at these places. Back post, Yohe just oversteps, and the Carolina defense forced to fight. I, while we're talking, just to keep you on good terms, Julie, just do some sit-ups or something. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, how are you doing? Good, Phil. How are you? Pretty good. Exciting a gorgeous game. weekend. Oh, it's beautiful here in Greensboro. Touched in towards the area. Wambach, the freshman, can't put it in. Florida against North Carolina. Perhaps not much of a surprise to see these two teams here. In fact, the only team that beat Florida, Tony, this year was North Carolina. But to see in the second half North Carolina trailing in a championship game is something that you don't see often. No, it's very unusual. Give uh, credit to Becky Burley and her staff for developing this team. And uh, uh, UNC's in a battle. Harlow making a run to the middle. Carvelson bringing the ball down and no problem for the Gators in the corner. Any players that you had not looked at perhaps this weekend that caught your eye? We've seen most, most of the players. We're, we're looking at uh, some of the players on both teams, quite honestly. But many of these players have been scouted uh, you know, by my national team staff. And uh, I don't want to give any players <laughs> away that might be playing in the midfield competing <laughs> against Julie. But uh, no, there, there's some players out fresh here young that, legs out there. <laughs> that are really exciting. Chance for Parlo, who despite the hamstring pull, continues to gut it out. To the middle. Florence dropping it back. Troy. 
McDowell on the near side. Cindy Parlow, obviously the target player of the year last year for North Carolina and a finalist in all the categories again this year. What is it that makes Parlow so dangerous? Well, she can, she can do it all on the soccer field. First of all, her size and her heading presence is outstanding. She can take players on. She's a great volley finisher. One of the things that people don't realize is how well she sets up defenders in the penalty area. I'm sure we'll see some of that later on as this game progresses. Gilhart takes a talking to from the referee as Carvelson was tripped up. And again, we see the physical play from Florida, and that's something they're going to look to all half. Keep banging up these tired UNC players. 19th foul so far against the Heels. Carvelson and Fair. Just a two player wall. Flaherty guarding the line. Chipped in for Parlow. Well read by the Gator defense. There was no way Cindy Parlow was going to get to that ball. Tony, maybe as a, as a, a goalkeeper yourself, give us some insight into Meredith Flaherty. She's come up so huge this whole weekend for Florida. And and doing a great job in her senior season. Well, she's she's outstanding. I mean, she's big in the in the semifinal. She's been huge in this game, and she's going to have to continue to be uh, keep performing. And one of the things with Meredith is to make sure that she doesn't get caught up in the emotion as this second half unfolds. Up the line, far side, Troy heads it on, and out of play for a Gators throw. Now, in a way, obviously a national title is on the line here. But there's still a spot for a goalkeeper on the Women's World Cup side. Are these two players in Mullenix and Flaherty perhaps fighting it out in a little duel themselves? Well, Siri's already in the residency program. She's already been invited in. Meredith, ha Meredith has been in with the national team, and certainly with her performance this weekend, and we're going to have to keep an eye on her. What are you looking for? There's still a few slots left to fill on that residency program. Are there any specific areas you're looking to fill? Probably a midfielder. Don't worry, Jim. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Take the knife out of my back. <laughs> uh, a striker and the goalkeeper position. So those three. I think we've got all the defenders we need. Schwoy on the turn. Here's Wambach, the freshman, with Fotopoulos to her left, and Fotopoulos unmarked. Cleared away by the Heels defense. Well, didn't you hear he's moved me up to forward with my blazing speed? He didn't tell you about that? Here's a chance for North Carolina. <laughs> Speaking of the breakaway and just off target, the sophomore Florence. Well, truth is, we are going to expect more goal scoring from Julie Foudy, <laughs> and, uh, and we know she's going to deliver. One thing we've seen, obviously, Portland giving Carolina all they could handle a couple of days ago, and the Gators in the lead with just 34 minutes left to go in the championship game. At least on the collegiate level, it seems as though the game has started to balance out a little bit. I mean, there is Carolina, but I guess the margin has shrunk significantly. Well, you're right. Carolina is still uh, top of the heap here. Uh, no, I'm not trying to take anything away from uh, Portland or Florida. However, the game the other night was very tactical, and that's something we don't always see in the collegiate women's game. Bill Shane, Julie Foudy, joined by national team coach Tony DeChico. Foul in the midfield. Of course, you have a pretty busy year coming up for you. I guess the uh, Ukraine coming up in the near future, but it's the Women's World Cup next year, and that the U.S. used to dominate. Match. We talked about the field being balanced, but, I mean, you're trying to regain the World Cup. That's right. The World Cup right now is sitting in Oslo, and uh, our job is to win that back, and it's going to be a huge task, but we like the challenge, and we're going to go after it. With Julie and Kyler's leadership, we're going to get everything we have. On the break, the shot near post, and Mullenix parries Wambach's effort. Still in play, McDonald up the line, but a quick blast from Wambach on the long seeking ball and Florida perhaps unlucky not to be up 2-0 at the moment. Here we are, the Women's College Cup Championship game, North Carolina looking for a 15th NCAA title. But Florida has the lead as they look for their first, Phil Shane and Julie Foudy, joined by Women's national team coach Tony DeChico, and right now the Gators, for the most part, since taking the lead, have been on their heels. And again, you talk about tactics changing in the women's collegiate game, and when you have to take on a dominating power like North Carolina, sometimes you got to change the way you play. Absolutely, it's realistic, and I thought Clive Charles 
and the Portland team was outstanding uh, in the semifinal, and, and Florida's hanging in there here. They're doing a good job defensively. They're starting to trying to stay compact, and uh, they're getting an opportunity or two at the other end. So we got a lot of soccer yet. And that's the key. Florida's so opportunistic. The header, and Paulo oh. denied again. Swoy, the beautiful cross. Parlo unmarked, and Flaherty stops them again. Troy doing a great job getting to the end line and picking out her target. She sees Cindy Pardo making that slot run. She's going to come right up the middle, totally unmarked. Not sure there must have been a miscommunication in the floor defense. And Meredith Flaherty once again coming up with the big save off her line. Cindy Pardo, though, will want that back. She usually will do better with that ball. And most importantly, from any goalkeeper, not a rebound in sight today. Tony, we appreciate the time. Best of luck. and. Uh, the draw coming up, the All-Star Game as well. It's going to be a huge year for you. Well, thank you, Phil. Thanks, Julie. This is real exciting for me, and you're right. we got a big year planned. Well, hopefully we'll get a chance to see the uh, World Cup hoisted right alongside the Olympic gold medal. We'll second that. <laughs> Tony DiCicco, the national team coach. For those of you who want it in simple English, Julie's boss. <laughs> boss, man. Another chance for the Florida Gators is Wambach. Chasing fair and Mullenix touching it out of play for the Gators throw. How rare is this to see the Gators putting the heels on their heels? Reynolds in there replacing the ailing Tracy Ward. Tar Heels fans not too happy with the way things are going right now. Mention the J.C. Penny Classic. It comes your way later today on ABC Sports. 4 o'clock Eastern time from Palm Harbor, Florida. John Daly and Laura Davies, two of the biggest hitters in golf, combining forces in the J.C. Penney Classic. 4 o'clock Eastern today on ABC. You know, Phil, Carolina's had its best chances when they've been able to get the ball, work the ball in, have the Florida defense condense, and then they swing it wide quickly and get to the end line. And when they can get to the end line, they're having a bit of trouble finding people in the box. But when they do, they're creating great opportunities. They need to continue to look to those flanks to exploit the Florida defense, because up the middle, it's very compact. Bell will guide it out of play. One hour gone, a half hour left to go. Knock on wood. After the semifinal 150 minute marathon against Portland, North Carolina can never be sure. I think I was more tired than half those girls out there. I saw them after the game, a few of them in the hotel, and they were smiling and full of energy, and my back hurt. <laughs> I thought, God, I'm getting old. I can't even commentate four overtimes. Reynolds just throws a body in on that one. Duran to the far side. Yohi giving chase, but she will not catch up in time. A couple of subs coming in for North Carolina. Ann Ramey, the Oklahoma freshman, and Beth Shepard coming in. Standard substitutions for Carolina as Parlo. Looks like she'll take a seat. along with Raquel Carvelson. On the break, far side, Wambach just has a go, and she knows she should have done better with that. And you can see where these nagging injuries are gonna take their toll on Carolina. Danielle Borgman in the back, limping along with her leg bandaged up. Abby Wambach able to get around her on the outside. Speaking of bandages, it looks like the one across the forehead of Carrie Duran bothered her. She's taken it off. Again, 24 stitches needed after a head-to-head -head collision against Santa Clara on Friday and another foul called. <laughs> Tiffany Roberts tripped up outside the area and a free kick for the heels. Foul number 23 for Florida. What's going through Anson Dorrance's mind? This is a unique territory. Not a familiar position for him at all. Lori Fair. Snagged by Flaherty. Headed away, and the Gators will get a throw. Borgman 
again has really only made one run upfield all game long as the dynamic duo of Wambach and Patopoulos have kept her busy in the back. And for Carolina, when you're having to play against such a physical team like Florida that likes to make a lot of contact and initiate a lot of contact, for them, the key is going to be in this last 20 minutes, how can they hold on to the ball without having to chase it? Because when you're chasing on defense, it's, it's exhausting mentally and physically. Hold on to the ball, have some patience, and start sending players forward. But most importantly, start possessing the ball better. Here's Shepard outside. Florence is open. Mitts on defense. Florence pulls her down. No call. Here's a chance for Carolina. Into the middle for Ramey. And again, it's Gilhart touching it away. A dangerous pass from Yohe right back into the box, but it's cleared away, and Carolina will get a throw. Gilhart does a great job marking that near post run. That near post run is so important because that's what draws the keeper in, and she's got to be goal side of her on the near post, doing a great job. Into the middle. Flaherty. Looked like it just skimmed off the head of Keisha Bell. Here's Shepard on the steal and wide of the target. One nothing, Gators lead it over North Carolina. Santa Clara getting set along with Maryland. They already know they'll be in the final four teams who compete for the Men's College Cup. The other two quarterfinals going on today. Indiana leading Clemson 1 0 and Stanford with the early 1 0 lead against Virginia. So a couple of upsets in the making on the men's side. And of course, we will be there next week starting Friday just up the road in Richmond. Into the middle for Schwoy. Flaherty punches. Shepard whiffs on the shot to the middle. Florence, Ramey turns, cleared away by Bell. The Gators defense showing some signs of cracking. 25 minutes left. And there's a good example of not getting your defense out. When Florida clears that ball, they were slow to get their back line out. And what that does is it keeps all of Carolina on sides. And so you can see with the rebound, they're standing there alone. They have to get the defense out, keep things condensed. The topless fighting her way through five white jerseys. Got through four, but could not get through fair. Into the corner, but out of play. You gotta love the mentality of Danielle Fotopoulos taking on five players there, but a better option may be to hold it, hold the ball, let some midfielders catch up and make some run through, make some runs through for her, and she's sending other people in behind. A position for position swap, a somewhat rare one it appears, is no, in fact, McDonald will stay on. They'll bring out Florence as Jenna Klugel checks back into the game. Freshman from Minnesota, four goals, ten assists. And she was very evident against Portland pushing up this right flank. Into the air hit. Trouble for Mullenix. Fair catch right on the goal line. So McDonald is pushed up into the right attack. Ramey and Schwoy are still in the attack as well, and Klugel. Pushing Florence out as she resumes her spot in the left midfield. Stacker, a blind pass to the middle for Fair. Lombach just decks the Carolina defender, and they will call a foul. More bodies fly. Nearing the midway point of the second half. Time running out on the heels. Gilhart, a rare miscue, and she won't make the same mistake twice. It's touched out of play. And you can see the Carolina forwards pushing forward towards the goal they're attacking. They're trying to stretch the field, open this game up, because that plays right into their strengths. Quickness and speed on 1v1s. 
Roberts to Schwoy. Back to Roberts. Nearly 70 international appearances for the Carolina senior. One more national championship is what she'd like to win here. A blast to Flaherty. White shirts all around. But the Gator keeper comes down with the ball. Carolina is looking far too stagnant in the box. When they're making those runs, they're standing. And what's happening is Tiffany Roberts is beating her player on the inline, and everyone in the box is standing. So she doesn't have a real target to hit. And they're not finding the right people in the box. Bell's pass deflected back. Gators holding on. Here's Hall. Pass to the middle for Fotopoulos. Thought about calling offside the near side linesman. The deflected shot just wide. What a way that would have been to give up a second goal. Duran. No doubt about offside on that one, although it should be so much for passive offsides. <laughs> I think you and I made just as much of an effort for that ball as Fotopoulos did. Anson Dorrance, though, still trying to piece this puzzle together. And as he's looking down his bench, he's just looking at the injured players. I said to their trainer yesterday, I said, you know, who's who's injured? And he said, let's start with who's not injured. <laughs> he didn't have all day. And you watched him in their in their jog and stretch yesterday and they had bandages on. And there was ice bags everywhere. And Roberts. So dangerous cutting in. Ramey deflected away and Carolina will get a throw. Schroy back heel Shepard looking for the return pass but that that's probably where the 150 minutes is starting to show its evidence yep. more mentally even than physically is Beth Shepard expecting Lori Schroy to continue the run and it just wasn't there and exactly right Phil. when you get tired you don't want to finish that runoff unless you know you're going to get that ball so you start being hesitant with that run and stopping it early and you're getting it back in the all that's there is a defender instead of the player you're looking for. Less than 20 minutes remaining. Here in the second half, Gators lead it 1 0 on the sixth minute goal from the NCAA all time leading scorer, Danielle Fotopoulos. Flugel, gifted freshman, bringing it to the right. McDonald, a missed touch, and the Gators will play it away. Now, Flugel was the parade national co-player of the year with Ali Wagner from Santa Clara and she also comes into this game with Achilles tendonitis they said she came off the field barely able to walk at the end of Friday's match and so she hasn't seen a lot of time in there today miscue on defense for the Gators Flaherty a little bit of a late start and Tiffany Roberts almost made her pay And somewhat amazing, Roberts playing with a sore knee. In fact, for much of the past few years, but this year it's been bothering her. Played about 145 of the 150 minutes on Friday, and she has not taken a seat yet. She is tireless. She can run all day. She's Sick, got isn't it? To do it. Yeah. 18 and a half. And Gilhart read that one well, charging up from the back line to clear it away for Florida. What this match turns into is everyone's getting tired and the tactics start to fall and the passes start to get a little. Aaron, as you see that this becomes a psychological battle. Carolina comes in with a lot of confidence and a lot of experience in this type of game. Florida, on the other hand, has the confidence in one goal, but they're going to have to fight that confidence factor because this is their first time in a championship game. McDowell, a chance here. The shot straight on, perfect position. 30 fouls in today's match, 26 of them by Florida. Getting close to the time where Cindy Parlow will be re-entering the game. Can she provide some heroics for the heels? Ramey. Back heel from Schroy. Gets the return. Feeds Ramey with space. Reynolds comes over on defense. 
and stops the play cold. Plugel looking for Ramey and Reynolds out of play. Throw in deep for North Carolina. Ramey wasn't able to get around that last defender, but the positive for Carolina there is that they're getting to the flanks because that's where the space is. They keep trying to go down the middle, trying to go down the middle, and what they just keep running into is a stacked Florida defense. They've got lots of numbers in the middle, and they're going to try and keep it that way. Give them the flanks and keep the middle compact. Harlow and Florence both coming into the game. Beth Shepard takes a seat, as does Raven McDonald, so Schwoy will probably drop back to the midfield. Florence, Ramey, and Parlo in the attack. News from the men's quarterfinals. Clemson has just scored. Trevor Adair's crew equalizing their match with Indiana. With these fresh legs coming in for Carolina, they're going to look more, for more mobility up top. They've been a bit stagnant, especially in the box, so they're going to look to get some mobility out of those fresh players because that's when they're the most dangerous. Schwoy to the middle, and Hall heads it away. Stacker, Schwoy, flip to the corner. Plugel to Schwoy, and Reynolds. Make that bell slides in to clear it away. Florida making a couple of subs as well. Katie Tullis is back onto the field, as is Adrian Marrera, the senior out of Lilburn, Georgia, taking a seat, Karen Hall and Sarah Yohe. And Yohe was very instrumental in the Gators' semifinal win, relatively quiet here today against North Carolina. Parlow against Tullis. Wambach back on defense. You can hear the screaming from the field, trying to get Keisha Bell to close in on Meredith Florence. Under 15 minutes left to go in the Carolina dynasty. The topless onside, but she cannot control the play. Nice ball, and Bell forced to track back against Florence. Florida trying to do something only two other teams have done before, and that's win an NCAA title in their fourth year of existence. Schroy eludes the tackle, cannot keep it in play, and the acrobatic effort from Parlo goes out, and it will be a goal kick. A player is down. A timeout on the field. 1-0. Gators lead it with 14 minutes left to go. Anson Dorrance and Becky Burley, who has the right answers. Time for another NCAA flashback. One year ago from tomorrow, North Carolina, Connecticut. The shot from Robin Confer. North Carolina winning their 14th NCAA crown over the last 17 years. NCAA title number 15 might have to wait a while if the Florida Gators have their say. Carolina won their first title in the very first year of NCAA existence, but the fourth year of the program back in 82. A few years later, George Mason equaled the feat, and the Florida Gators 14 minutes and six seconds away from becoming the third team to accomplish that. Mia Hamm, assistant coach for North Carolina in her spare time. Looking on with a little anxiety, Keisha Bell receiving a little bit of treatment on the far side. Becky Burley, when she first came to Florida four years ago, told her first class there, who were freshmen at the time, that they would win a national title by the time they graduated. And people said she was crazy to think that, to go against the greats of North Carolina, Notre Dame, she said to them, we will win a national championship by the time you graduate. And here they are as seniors, the Baxters, Tracy Ward, Melissa Peeney, those types that have been there for four years at Florida and seen the success of this program in just short years. Keisha Bell having some contact lens problems. Seeing straight again and back underway. Harlow against Gilhart. 
Carolina starting to push some bodies into the attack. Offside against Fotopoulos. Florida's been doing all game is they're just going to bang that long ball up to Danny and what's happened in the second half is Florida's had a tough time holding on to that ball up top and so their defenders are not getting a lot of rest. Danny needs to do a better job with Abby up top and try and hold on to that ball buy some time give their team in the back some rest. Fotopoulos yeah, right. giving chase. Topless on the turn. Boardman sticks a foot in. Reynolds will surrender another throw. Reynolds again heading it upfield. Boardman will step into the attack. Here's Roberts with Parlo in front. To the middle for Florence. The turn by Carvelson. Did not even reach the net. Meredith Flaherty was there regardless. 1-0. Gators continue to lead it. 12 minutes left to go. As we get into the, about the 10-minute mark, you're going to see Carolina having to look at risk versus reward. How many defenders do I send forward and how many chances do I take offensively? Because there's only 10 minutes. You've got to start flying players forward and getting some numbers up on offense. The last team to beat North Carolina was Notre Dame back in October of 96. North Carolina has won 46 games in a row since then. Or 70 games in a row. They have 70 games in a row without a loss as I try and spit it out. But Notre Dame on the end of both of those 71 games ago. And with was a 2-1 Notre Dame win and 47 games ago a 2-2 Notre Dame tie. And with an NCAA record of 56 and 2. 56 wins and 2. This is this would be quite a historic victory for Flo for Florida. Take a look. Uh, it's just amazing what Anson Dorrance and this Tar Heel squad has accomplished. And when you consider somewhat of a troublesome year, controversy swirling around the Tar Heels program, but talk to a lot of the players and they say that, if anything, it's brought this team even closer together. Very ironic. He said that yesterday, in fact, to me, that it's it's been quite a rallying point for the team. And it's uh, it's been something that all the players have gotten behind. Back of the head to the forehead. And a lot of collisions. Danielle Boardman, the Cincinnati freshman, still receiving treatment. She's going to need years to recover from this weekend. Might be a teammate of yours coming up next year. One cap against Sweden back in 1997. But you can see her speed. Very evident here in North Carolina and could be used by Tony DeChico and company, but right now more important things on her mind. Coming up tonight on ESPN2, it's the National Rodeo Finals from Las Vegas, Nevada. What a showcase. 11.30 Eastern Time, the 40th Annual National Finals Rodeo, and you'll see it on the deuce. Clock stopped with 11 minutes and 30 seconds left to go and looks like they're concerned about her neck maybe a little whiplash but trainers are out and more concerns for Carolina this is probably a good rest for Carolina though they get a regroup get everyone together right now they should have everyone on the field people are kind of wandering around in different circles they should have everyone together on the field regrouping and saying okay what do we need to do what is our what is our game plan here Tina Murphy 5 5 sophomore from New York who got some time in the semifinal matchup looks like she'll be checking in for Boardman in the back 
Murphy actually ended up playing some time up front and almost used her speed on a breakaway. And this is not a good sight. They're bringing the stretcher out for Borgman. You can see Siri Mullenix is none too happy with this turn of events. You talk about the advantage of the rest, but mentally, what has to be going through Carolina's minds? Not only they're fighting uphill right now, but one of their key players is down. Well, I think this is such an interesting time in the game. You've got about 11 minutes left. And as a player, this is really what separates people because this is when you have to dig down. And after playing four overtimes in less than two days ago, you have to dig down and say, okay, what do I have left in there? You feel physically like you have nothing left, but you have to get into this game and say, okay, what can I give to this game mentally if I can't give it physically? And it tells a lot about a player, and you can see it in those four overtime games with such the remarkable performance from Portland and North Carolina and how they were able to sustain such an incredible fitness level through 150 minutes. And so for Carolina, the added pressure is that they've had more minutes and less rest than Florida on the other side. More highlights from this Women's College Cup weekend, plus a preview of the Men's College Cup coming your way on Worldwide Soccer, December 7th. That's tomorrow, 2.30 Eastern on ESPN2, plus highlights from league action around the world. Let's jump back. Early on, Danielle Fotopoulos on a breakaway was pulled down just outside the goal resulting in a free kick which she took care of herself. Looking back, many people would have thought this wouldn't be one goal enough because Carolina is known to put in four and a half they average per game during the season. And though Danny put it in early on, Florida's gained so much confidence from that and they've been able to ride that out well into the second half here. The sixth minute goal in Florida also grouping a little bit. It was. It would appear to be an inadvertent injury. The two players just jumping up and Boardman just getting the brunt of it. Prayers and wishes going out to her family and her teammates right now. Bill Shane, Julie Foudy with you here on this Women's College Cup weekend in Greensboro, North Carolina. The Florida Gators, a 1 0 lead, but for the moment at least, that significance has paled. It's great to see you see Abby Wambach, the freshman for Florida. She's walking around the huddle there, talking to the players, keeping them focused, getting them fired up. And of course, Flaherty in the middle. Take a look back at how Borgman went down. Again, it looked like the forehead collision. And it looked like she might even be out cold. Sad to see that because that's just two players going for the ball right there. Appears to be Sue Boardman, her mother, keeping a close eye. Obviously, North Carolina has got to be a little bit rattled here, but it's also a dangerous time for Florida getting back to the significance of the game. I mean, for the past three or four minutes, they've just been standing around getting cold. Whatever intensity there might have been in their game plan is out the window as well. And I think it plays well into the hands of North Carolina because they're the ones who really needed that rest. They needed the timeout to gather themselves and get a breather because they were the ones coming into this game like we've said so often with those tired legs. Regardless right now best wishes going out to Danielle Boardman. Hopefully appearance is deceiving. And what a big game for sophomore Tina Murphy to step into in the back. And her first touch will be starting this game up again with 11 and a half left to go to the top of the box headed away. 
Baxter starting the break for Topless again. A one-woman wrecking crew as she just dribbles through the defense. Cannot get past Murphy. Duran trying to win it back for the Gators and does. Again, possession is key right now for Florida. Well, they might be trying to dump it into the corners. Wambach actually had an open player in Keisha Bell. If you can hold on to possession, you got to do it. You just want to see the minutes go by on the clock for Florida. That's the key. Every minute that goes by is more confidence that they're going to gain, and they're just going to try and have to wear it out. Everything's going to be slow. They're going to take their throw in slow. They're going to take their free kick slow. Slow down the game. Petopoulos flipping it on and Fair sending it back. Murphy. Looking for Carvelson. Mitz. A nice job to shield that one away. And Carvelson, a little frustration as she went in. A lot of space on that field. I think Florida's back line, their back four, needs to push up and condense. Make the field smaller than it is because you want to keep those numbers around the ball, keep numbers around Carolina so that they don't have time to make decisions on the ball. Here's Florence. Mitz sending it back upfield. Nice work by Schwoy. Parlo a little tired and Mitz just cut in front to intercept. Remember Florida already having to go to the bench a little bit. Tracy Ward, one of their defensive stalwarts, was knocked out of the game with a left foot injury. Renee Reynolds has stepped into the middle of the defense, but right now right back Danielle Borgman, an offensive threat as well, is out of the game for Carolina with under 10 minutes to go. Roberts again slicing into the middle and just too many bodies between her and the area. They'll call a foul though. Nice work on the outside. Roberts to the middle over Parlo's head and cleared away. Right now, Florida only has Danielle Fotopoulos up. Every single other player is behind the ball. They're going to go into a defensive bunker, and they're going to try and just ride this out. They're going to be launching balls forward, and if they can find Danny with that target up top, she's the only one at top going against three defenders, they need to have her hold the ball up top. Corner kick for Carolina. But with Florida only leaving that one player up top, Carolina has got to start sending its defenders forward. They need to start flying players forward and putting some pressure on Florida's goal. Go! Substitution for Florida. Yohe back out there. And Penny will take a seat. Towards the six, again looking for Parlow, but the leg just not getting it there from McDowell. One well by Roberts. Wambach just throwing the body in and trying to come away with it. Towards the midfield for Fair. And a foul is called, a free kick for North Carolina. Of course, this is the Women's College Cup. The men get their turn one week from now in Richmond, Virginia. The semifinals on Friday. You'll see it on ESPN2. Championship game on Sunday. You'll see that on ESPN. Parlow to the turf. Actually, Florence, the pass to the middle for Parlow. Flugel on the back post. Sending it to the middle for Duran. Looked like it might have hit her hand, but inadvertently, and it will go out for a corner kick. Seventh of the game. Two very close no calls. Keisha Bell needs to be careful in the box. They're going to try and get the ball at someone's feet in the box, Carolina is, and they need to make sure they're not committing any dangerous fouls in the box, giving up a penalty kick for Carolina. Here's Fair. Nice back heel to McDowell. Cleared away by Keisha Bell. And back up to the midfield. Mention the Men's College Cup again, fighting it out for the final on Sunday afternoon in Richmond. Who will be there? Well, Santa Clara upset St. John's yesterday. That just one of the upsets. Indiana 
giving Clemson all they can handle. Still tied at one at the half. Virginia having their problems with Stanford. Cardinal lead at one nothing in the second half. Plugel to the middle, bending it to the back post, punched away by Flaherty, and cleared away by Mitz on the back post. Far side Parlow keeps it in play. Still Parlow and out of play for the corner kick. Maryland knocking off Creighton. So the young Terps are back in the championship weekend. Under six minutes to go here for the women. McDowell can't get the shot. Neither can Florence as again Gilhart just throwing legs in the middle of the fray and clearing it away. And Phil, I've talked a lot about risk versus reward, and that's something that Carolina needs to consider. We, we're just getting into five minutes left into the game, and they're still playing with three defenders in the back. And we're going to get a shot of that. They got their three defenders standing back there, and Florida doesn't even have a target person up top right now. I say you start throwing numbers forward, and you start taking those risks. Just over five minutes left to go. Not much time to take risks at the moment. Anson Dorrance. Harlow. Carvelson was turning. Looked like she might have been held. No call. Portland taking North Carolina to less than 30 seconds from penalty kicks. Almost 150 full minutes before Carolina was able to break the ice. And they need a goal just to get to overtime here. Deflected, open net, cleared away on the back line. And Florida playing the physical game that they are has to be careful, though, and cautious about committing fouls around the box because Carolina is going to be dangerous in the air. They don't want those balls flighted in there, giving them a free shot on goal. Obviously, considering what Flaherty has done, little doubt, especially if Florida holds on to win this, she'll be the defensive MVP. But for today's game, give Erin Gilhart some credit as she has been on the spot shutting down Parlow and company. And it's their whole back line, really, has done a fabulous job shutting down that 1v1 game. Nice run by Roberts. And this time it's Mitz to touch it out of play. Carolina relies so much on the individual brilliance of their forwards, and it's something that they've had the benefit of having so many talented players over the year, they can rely on that. But if you come across a defense that's as organized as Portland was on Friday, and as organized as Florida has been, it creates some problems for them. Parlow diving back for the ball. McDowell. Loose. Back post, Kluger! And she caught it on the outside. In fact, the ball's still in play as Parlow almost catches up to it. Bit of hesitancy in the box with Carvelson. She doesn't want to take the shot immediately. You see a little bit, of, little bit of miscommunication. They're hesitant. And instead of this killer instinct in the box, Jenna Kluga tries to take the final strike and just doesn't hit it well, hitting the outside of the ball. Less than three minutes to go. Murphy into the middle, and again, Gil Hart surrenders the body. Florence, the blast over the bar. No heroics today, at least not yet. But we know how capable she is of those. What a goal she scored against Portland with only 22 seconds left in the game. They've had their chances here today. Notre Dame has won a national championship. Did it a few years ago. 95 and 85. It was George Mason who knocked out North Carolina in the championship game. So I guess North Carolina is only supposed to lose in the championship once every decade. But Florida <laughs> obviously didn't read the book. Because North Carolina won every single one of the other 14 NCAA titles. And what it really comes down to at this level is you're not going to get many opportunities. How many of those opportunities are you going to capitalize on? And Florida is, has obviously, with the one goal lead, done the better of the two. Wombach coming in, cleats up, and a yellow card comes down. 
Lori Schwoy a little the worse for wear on that one. McDowell for Parlo. And again, it's Meredith Flaherty. What a weekend for the Gator keeper. And this is probably one of the biggest weaknesses that female keepers have in the game is when to come off their line and having the courage to come off their line. And that is something that Flaherty has helped her back line out tremendously this weekend with is She's not afraid to come out of, off her line. And when she comes, she's going to come. She's not going to hesitate and back up and get caught in no man's land. Less than one minute remaining. Florida one. North Carolina, nothing. Will the crown rest on new heads in 1998? Tullis up the line and out of play. Mitz to the middle. Stacker heading it forward. Headed out of play by Aaron Baxter. 30 seconds left. Loose in the box. Gilhart kicks it high. McDowell to the middle and Hall sends it high. Here's a chance for Florence Rent and stolen away by Keisha Bell with 10. Lori Fair to McDowell. North Carolina fighting to hold on to the crown, but as time winds down, the Florida Gators have won the 1998 National Championship. When this weekend started out, Julie, of the four teams who remained in the championship hunt, Florida had to be considered the least likely to a, come away. A brand new program, only four years old, going against the eternal dynasty of North Carolina. They've won 15 of the last 18 national titles, and Florida, in only its fourth year, was able to pull off a historic win here today, no doubt about it. The goal of the sixth minute by Danielle Fotopoulos and the spectacular saves by Meredith Flaherty. Flaherty. The Gators are national champions. Coming into this weekend, Danielle Fotopoulos had scored a record 117 goals. She said she didn't care about the goals. What she wanted to do was to win a championship. And with her 118th goal of her illustrious career, Danielle Fotopoulos has given the Gators that very title. And our Adidas player of the game, Danielle Fotopoulos. It's so great to see after three seasons scoring over 30 goals, she'd been able to make it to the tournament appearance, Final Four appearance, once at SMU in her first two years there. And now to finish off her career, 118 goals, all-time career leading scorer, a goal today to win it for Florida, and finishing her collegiate career with a national title. Meanwhile, another sparkling performance between the pipes. Eight saves from Meredith Flaherty. She needed seven to get through the quarterfinals. Seven more to get out of the semis past Santa Clara. And eight today to shut out the mighty North Carolina Tar Heels. The Men's College Cup comes your way next weekend. Santa Clara taking on Clemson, Indiana. That's tied at one in the second half. Maryland taking on Stanford of Virginia. And the Cardinal leading Virginia 1-0 in the second half there. For Julie Foudy, I'm Phil Shane. Thanks for joining us. A new national champion in women's soccer, the Florida Gators knocking off the heels in Carolina in front of a crowd of 10,583. Shooting Sports America coming your way next on ESPN.